tuned in to Athletics Double LC yeah, 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 yeah. with Lamar, uh -huh. Lucius, uh -huh. Big League Chu, yeah. and my man Clyde. <laughs> you are about to be schooled in all things track and field. This is experience. Yes, sir. We are talking past, past present, present, future. future. Y'all listen up. Let's go. Hi, people. Welcome to the Athletics LLC neighborhood. <laughs> Welcome back, cardigan and all. <laughs> Happy Athletics LLC day, everyone. <laughs> I actually have rest for two weeks now, so we're okay. We're okay again. <laughs> oh, well, man. Uh, as always, as always, we've got these tiles who uh, decide to show up every week to, to talk about, to banter about, to be petty about, and then just to give a dose of track and field reality to the world. So first, Clyde, how are you today, sir? Oh, you know, I'm just hanging on campus. California love. That's what that is. <laughs> avoiding like avoiding rainstorm, rainstorms and, you know, just, just Whatever. Li living our West Coast life. <laughs> Whatever. Governor, how are you today, sir? It was what? Mm, almost 100 yesterday, and it was 71 right. today. Right. Sunny skies, very breezy. But you know, I'm on campus too, so there you go. <laughs> Good to be here. Right. Sir Lucius, I mean, I'm still blinded by the bling, so I don't know if I can get over that before I get to your weather of Florida, so. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the bling is, uh, you know, we, we are on a constant uh, mission to add to the bling around here, but the weather has a mind of its own. and It showed that last weekend. Yeah. It was crappy, beautiful, super crappy. So, <laughs> and, and then since, since then it's been beautiful again. A little windy, but it's been beautiful. So we'll take the win and roll with it. <laughs> Lamar, feel my pain huffins. Do we dare about, ask what we're trying to feel? Oh, it's about that time of the year. So uh, between now and next week's show, I'll be uh, Texas to Indiana to Florida. <laughs> yeah. So about you'll, that time, you'll baby. You'll feel all the weathers in one. <laughs> I will feel all the weathers in the next seven days. That is for sure. By, by plane, I hope. Oh, uh, yes. Good call. Yes. Oh, thank you. There is there is Omaha, Nebraska and uh, Everett, Washington in my near future as well. So those will both be on a plane also. Well, bless that trip then. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all of those trips i know yes. right <laughs> yes so par for the course week in and week out track is back and track is definitely back because uh we saw some official and some shouldn't be official things happen this week <laughs> last week Ooh. Uh, Ooh, can i can try to jump ahead you. You're trying to jump ahead. I just, no, I'm forecasting. <laughs> forecasting. <laughs> I, I want to talk the tone. That's Jesus. what that is. She's yes. setting, she's the, setting, tone. She's setting the tone. Stormy weather to come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I think what was interesting this weekend, just to get us started, is uh, the B events. You know, athlete X is best at this event but we're going to run an off event just to you know train above and below and we got 11 0 and 2020 out of some b events um my favorite non-starting gator running people down the straightaway again it was i just want to get us started i just want to get us started with the commercials from the Florida Relays. Well, the first thing I want to say about the Florida Relays is, you know, big, and you know, probably should have did some heartbeat props, but big, big shout out to the officials, to my coaching staff, to the, to the staff here at the university for, I mean, like we got, we completely shut down Thursday night. 
um, my, my, my director of ops, Adrian Melendez, you know, we all in my staff, we sit down, come up with a plan to get everything done. The only thing we, the only event that we did not run this weekend was the high school boys and girls long jumps. That was it. We got everything done on Friday, which is an incredible, beautiful day. And then we got a, a storm that was supposed to last for like 90 minutes on Saturday because of some wind current changes it ended up being a six hour storm. Mm. And, oh my gosh. you know, again, we sit down and, you know, we, we, we get the schools that aren't coming back and we, we condense the heats and, you know, we, we put on the track meet and there were some, some great performances. I mean, big shout out to Abby Steiner. And, and I'm just telling y'all folks, I witnessed this. There's more there. <laughs> um, um, clearly, you know, you can see that, you know, maybe it's because she knows she's got a hundred instead of a 60 that she's not as anxious about her starts. Her start was very patient and consistent. Abby's a problem, folks. She's a problem. Yeah, she is. Well, um, since there's, we're going to spend a lot of time on the East Coast with track is back segment. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to, I'm going to jump to the West Coast and, and, and the best thing I saw, uh, you know, live and in person th this past weekend is uh, I, I'm just going to call him Odoti because I'm sure mm -hmm. I can't say the rest of it, but Jarius Cooper and Stanford have a freshman, a legitimate bona fide 10 Oh, seven win legal running freshman. <laughs> and look, you just got to go watch the tape, man. Like that. Tape, it looked good. It, it looked damn good. There is more there. Oh, Let's yes, there is. Well. yes, there is. Yes, there is. There is more there. And, and for the, for something like that to be going on at a bona fide, absolute distance program, right? For, for Coop to get somebody like that on the campus and, and, and get this thing going in the direction it's going in is, is amazing. And, and um, uh, you know, it, I hope it doesn't come off like condescending because I don't mean it. Like, I'm just proud of Coop and that kid is amazing. Like, it, it was a great, great, great show um, that he put on this weekend and, and ran down some folks in the four by one, which of course you would imagine that would happen. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that, that kid is the real deal. And, and, and as we've talked about privately, I mean, this is not the first time Coop has done this. You know, he had right. Jalen Bacon at Arkansas State. So mm -hmm. uh, we're not surprised. This. Others, others may be, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, others may be, but we're not surprised. And, you know, uh, when Coop gets him, he coaches him. Well, he does, and he's got one. So we expect to hear from this dude for a while because, he, like, as Clyde said, he's a true freshman. <laughs> yes. True freshman. So I'll like to bring everyone's attention to the center, you know, the, the South Central part of the country. And there were some shenanigans at the Texas A&M Texas duel. Were there ever? <laughs> no, no. But before you go, <laughs> I, I need you because you have, you have, you like you you're not a texas guy but you've been in that state off and on for oh, yeah. a long time yes i don't think everybody truly understands the magnitude of the dislike yes. between the two institutions so maybe um, before you go into the shenanigans you can explain <laughs> that part of it well you know i i had a front row seat um when i got to rice to see the venom between texas a and m and texas and it is, you know, it is and it will always be one of the greatest rivalries. And God help us, when Texas joins the SEC, holy, like I'm trying to imagine like what is going to happen when they have to play football against each other every single year. Um, yeah. Oh, man, it, it is it is of epic proportions, you know, and um, the only thing I, I can say now, obviously, you know, um, was it on the SEC network or not? Do, do you know yes. who was televised? It was. It was. It was. Okay. okay. You can go and, back and watch it right now. 
Hmm? You can go back and, and watch the replays right now. Okay. So, you know, these, these are things that have to be televised because, you know, there's so <clears throat> many uh, fans, alumni, um, and it doesn't matter what sport it is. As long as those two teams are connecting and, and going head to head, it is much CTV. It, it just is. Um, you know, so, so you take the format of a dual meet, right? And then you add the venom and the vitriol and the hate and, and the history, the horns down, all of that. And the results speak for themselves. I mean, 1107. <laughs> What? 11.04. Sorry, 11.04. Sorry, 11.04. But can we talk about the women's 400 here for a minute? But easily the best race of the week. 50 flat? No, yeah, 50 flat, but fourth place was (laughs) 51-1. Right. Insane. So in in traditional dual meet scoring, that doesn't score. (laughs) <laughs> right, 51-1 don't get any points if they're scoring. 51-1 right one one gets exactly. no points. Exactly. The, the only thing that's wrong with that meet, and, and I'll say this because I'm a fan of, I, I've, I've said it for years, line up and race your rivals once a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to see a whole schedule of dual meets. Yes. But every school has that school. Yep. Line we, up we, had, we had this debate in, in season one. That's right. Line up and race your rivals once a year. It's good for the soul. It's good for the sport. The only problem with this meet is move it to the end. Move it to the first week in May, like all the other, you know, West Coast dual meet weekends. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be even even more fire. Yeah, man. Right. But yeah, no, it, I'm glad they did it. I hope they don't stop doing it anytime um, soon. I'm it's hearing fun. it's not happening again. <laughs> well, now see oh, no, and that, and it's, that's just bad. Done. That's it's what done. I'm hearing. You're hearing that too, yeah, Sir Lucius? Yes, I'm hearing the same thing. <laughs> that, that, probably that's the same voice. That's, saying. That's Clyde, tragic. Clyde, it's too personal. It's too, I mean, it is, it goes beyond like sport, you know? And, and so I happened to get to Missouri when the, the year before Missouri joined the SEC and the Missouri Kansas dual meet. You know, they had one indoor, one outdoor, and it was straight up like, you know, and people forget that that rivalry is, I mean, the history of that rivalry is unreal, you know. So I wish, you know, that we were, you know, we were just like you said, Clyde, like, let's have those those mortal enemies, you know, that the one school that you love to hate get together man let's 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 do it you know and two and, weeks before conference two weeks before mm-hmm. go on and do it and, and 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 if it is actually going if texas texas a&m is going away pat Flo, shame on you don't let that happen. <laughs> don't let that happen i mean look and, i would i would i would pop popcorn and pay money for florida florida state oh yes baylor, baylor, baylor tcu yes. Michigan, Ohio State. Oh my goodness! Yeah, right. I I can think of a lot of really good ones. I mean, it was yeah. Auburn, Alabama. Oh, boy. Auburn, Alabama. Yeah. Yo, run it, run it in Montgomery. I don't care where you run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that was um an unbelievable unbelievable showcase, um, one on both sides by Texas, um, and you know. I, I hope that you know somewhere along the line they rekindle that and they get back together because it it does nothing. I mean, what I don't know. So did anyone hear the announcer during during that meet? Oh, he was very pro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I right, look. If you've ever been to a meet in A and M, that's a, that's, <laughs> that's going to happen. Because okay, so, so there was a complaint at the at the Texas relays, right? Yeah. Because the sprint medley, A and M wins the race, breaks yes. the record, and the and the Texas relay announcer kept talking about what Texas did. He didn't exactly. even mention that A and M broke the Queen's record. 
the so that was probably a little bit of payback. Thing. Right. So, right. The exact, so, yeah. so you're watching someone in second place. And the announcer is going ham on that person, right? And you're just like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't remember. There's so many I don't what remember which here? relay it was, but at one point he was like, AM is, is making up ground. I'm like, bro, what are you watching? Because that is not happening. It's <laughs> not happening. Oh, it, it was okay. But but that adds to, you know, the flavor of the meat yes, as a does. person who has no stock in either side yeah. of this fight. Yeah. I just thought the whole thing was hilarious. <laughs> but before before we jump off of this particular topic, like this is one of those moments that all collegiate track coaches need to understand is bigger than themselves. Yes. Like the health of collegiate track and field is linked to a rivalry weekend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's actually a relevant regular season meet. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and, and to, to that point, I'm probably going to miss something, but ju- just real quick, from that meet, you got the number five mark in the country in the men's hundred. Okay. You got the number three time in the country in the women's hundred. Mm-hmm. You have the number one time in the country in the men's 200. And then you, and then, and then it starts to get interesting. One and two in the women's 200, one, two, and three in the men's 400, one, two, three, and four in the women's 400. Like, you gonna take the meat away? We don't, we don't want to do this in the future? Like, what do you mean? What, yeah, what's what I'm saying? Thing are you gonna go do? Exactly, exactly. They're, com- they're coming to our house? Like, we've got it. okay, sure. Mark that on the calendar, you know? Yeah, just push it, push it a little further down the calendar, we're good. <laughs> I think it should be a requirement. I'm I'm not against it. I, I'm race for rivals once a year. Like we're good. Can can I can I just getting back to the East Coast of things? Um, and it we we have a we have a saying around here. I hope I'm not violating some kind of LLC code. That, <laughs> that, that oh boy. That cussing mouse is the best mouse. Okay. Hey, I just want that's trademarked. Now, <laughs> when when Sir Lucius is in his petty mode, <laughs> that is also awesome. And there's not too many things more petty than Jacory Patterson running 2020 just because he can, or Anna Hall running 55 35 in the 400 hurdles because she's bored. Can I? <laughs> Can I just can we can we just let like again can we let just let that wash over you? The same human being has run 204 55 seconds and scored 6400 points and it just turned April. Oh, right. Man. So you know yeah. unreal. Is, is she pole vaulting next weekend? <laughs> just because please do not give her any ideas. Because if, she, if you challenged her, I'm sure she would take on that challenge. Oh man, she's a five meter vaulter for sure. (laughs) I mean, like, I mean, I'm gonna give credit where credit's due. One to her incredible work ethic, and also, you know, to my trusty assistant, uh, um, Adrian Man, for helping her get ready for that. And I think the biggest thing with that one was just like, if you watch the race, there's so much more there. Mm -hmm. So much more there. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we got to coach her better. And we will, and we'll see how far we go with that thing. You know, that gives, that gives her options, you know, for, for her future, obviously. The, so the, the 400 hurdles, women's 400 hurdles at Florida relays might have been, I don't even know how to distinguish this. It was the most surprising event for me of the weekend. Not because I don't know that these people can run because they can, but in this one particular event from this one particular meet, you have Anna Hall, 55-35. Masai Russell, who we all know is brilliant, mm-hmm. 55-41. Uh, Florida has another girl who ran 56-25, <laughs> Vanessa Watson, okay? All right. Howard has a 56-32, shout out to David Oliver and Miss Jessica Wright. And then, you know, one of the best high jumpers in the country, I guess it's a theme this weekend, Miss Rachel Glenn 
decided she gonna run it too. It ran fifty six forty three. So you know, okay, right. <laughs> like, but like I started, I started this segment by saying like we're doing off events this week. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because someone in the office when we were doing the heat sheets saw Rachel Lynn the 400 hurdles and was like, is that a mistake? And Melanie Walter goes, nope, it's not a mistake. And she will run well. And she ran well. Because mm. yeah, she runs on their, on their 4 by 4 indoors all the time. Yeah. And people don't notice that. You know? So, you know, that, that was a heck of a job by her as well. <laughs> What, what, what I think the, I, I don't know I don't know I don't know what the stats were, but I think the women's eight hundred was pretty good for the as well. Oh yeah, it was very good. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find that. I just had it in front of me. It was, but if we're if we're transitioning to the mid distance and, and distance events, well, the women's okay. So the women's eight hundred, one, two, three, four, five, top five in the country, didn't happen at the Hayward Premier. No, it happened at the Florida Relay. <laughs> right. Being right. led by, inexplicably, of course, a Gator, Ms. Barrett. <laughs> a Gator. Villanova, Georgetown, Penn State, and Kentucky, 202, 203, 203, 204, 204. Yeah, I guess Imogen mm-hmm. didn't, couldn't handle having 204 right. being the leading mark from the hep. Right. So uh, she's let like, me no, just get in line here. On her own. Hold team. on. Of which Anna Hall still is number six in the country. <laughs> so, so she's currently one, one, and six. Is that right? <laughs> one in the HEP, one in the four in the hurdles, and six in the no, eight. She's two, two, two in the four in the hurdles. Two in the four oh. hurdles. Flog her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Miss Wilson in Arkansas has something to say about that loud and proud. So, oh, yeah. Man. And, you know, and of course, uh, as we talked about the weekend before, it was Stanford weekend and where Raleigh relays, for example, had one through 10 in the 5k. Yeah, all of that's gone. It's all Stanford invitational now. One mm-hmm. through- yep. <laughs> what, what, what about the group from Stanford? Like he had like five guys break 2850 or something crazy. Yeah. 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 Remember, when 29, remember when 29 minutes was fast, right? Like oh, yeah. Four. Um, let's see. 28-16, BYU, 17, Northern Arizona, 18, Oklahoma State, 19, BYU again, 19, Tulsa, and Arkansas rounded that out with 28-21. And those didn't even eclipse. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. Number three in the time, Kiprop ran 28-15.72. <laughs> All at Stanford wow. at damn near midnight. Because that's what we do out west. We run the 10Ks. Yes. Super late in the night. <laughs> having, having been a head coach at that meet, they you you find yourself sitting next to people beating drums at 11.55 at night and watching guys just click off 60s. And you're like, what is going on right now? <laughs> that's right. Oh, man. And and up next, Mount Sack. <laughs> Here yes. we go. Right. Yeah. Here okay, so so and I, I'm gonna lob this up as a teaser, and we'll, I'm, we can get into it a little bit next week. But uh, a week from now on this campus, Florida, Florida State, Clemson, Texas Tech, TCU, Texas A&M, LSU. Ooh. And this isn't the big meet. <laughs> this isn't Florida. Really. Oklahoma State. Yeah. UNC. This is the Tom Jones. This is yes. the Tom Jones. So we can get a little bit more of that next week. But I figure as a teaser, um, maybe if you watch it this week, it gives you a week to get your reservations and hotels and your and air finder <laughs> or, get to, uh, or gas your car up. It might be cheaper to fly it is to gas your car up these days. But talk about I'm gonna track say, I'm, I'm going to say this and, about and, that track. And, 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 and I'm and, not giving and, anything and, away. I'm not giving right. anything away. I'm just going to say this. There's something happening in that meet that you do not want to miss. There's a lot of things happening in this meet you don't want to miss because we all know that there's a plethora of, of uh, professional athletes to train in this state. Right? <laughs> Can think about it like this. The top six guys from the Olympic Games and the 200 all trained in the state of Florida. 
Ooh wee. Yeah. Okay. And there is a very likelihood that you will see all six of them at some time next week in something. Yeah, that Olympic development section is just, I keep looking at the schedule and I'm like, man, do I need to travel yeah. on Saturday? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Speaking of, I mean, can, can we talk about the pros for a little bit, a second here? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So I, I almost want to ask this question in two different ways. Number one, have we seen the start list for the 100 for Bermuda? Yeah. <laughs> and number yes, two, have. what are the odds that all these characters line up? Sir Lucius, okay, do you well, know what the uh, lineup is? Okay, I've heard snippets of it, but please read it to me and I'll tell you who, who and I can tell you people that I do not think will show up. I'll, I'll give you that round to that. Ronnie Baker. Ron, Ronnie's not gonna be there. Noah Lyles. Noah, Noah will be there. Bednarek. But I think Kenny will be there. Bracey. Will not be there. Blake. Uh-oh. Johan. Johan? Yes. Oh, the old guy will show up. It's, it's, it's free money. They'll show up. Mike Rogers. <laughs> of course you know Mike's showing up. It's, it's money, right? <laughs> Mike will race right. anybody, anytime, Mike. anywhere. <laughs> right. If, he, if, if, if Mike can get a check, he's going to be there. Chris Belcher. Right. Belcher is another well. guy. He's a check. He'll be there. Arion Knighton. He will be there. Guarantee that one. And Brandon Carnes. Brandon will be there. Wow. Okay. Wait, and is Arion running I mean. the 100? Yes. Yeah. He's in the 100. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is. Hey, oh, it, you know, we, we can officially call the Bermuda event the start of the pro season. Um, There's yeah. enough high profile things going on out there. For, for that, what what what, what, is, what are some other what are some other good events going on there? I mean, in theory, the women's hundred should be yes interesting. You got again Michelle, yes. You got Michelle Lee IE off for her indoor season. Yep. You got a Kennison, Tamara Clark, Tahana Daniels, Felicia Brown, Courtney Johnson, Maya McCoy, Natasha Morrison, JV and Oliver, Kiara Parker, Destiny Smith Barnett, Sturgis. T.T. Terry, Gabby Thomas. Man. Uh, Shakoria Wallace from Jamaica, who I'm not familiar with, and Kayla White. Wowzers. So that's two, four, six. That's seven athletes that have sub-11 sub PBs. Yeah. In that race. What, what I do find interesting about the women's 100, and, and this isn't a, any kind of – I'm not being petty. I'm just interesting – the USATF promo shots that are all over the internet feature Shakari Richardson, who clearly is not in the meet. <laughs> so why are we doing that? <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> you know. But no, there, there's there's some interesting interesting things going on out there in theory. I hope everybody shows up. So can we yeah. talk about the 988? What 988? <laughs> the, I'm sorry, did you say the 1014? 1012. <laughs> okay. okay so and time. I, I'm, 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 I'm here for this. Now, now see, y'all had to do it. Okay, look. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we don't enjoy being these people. At least I don't. Mm. I don't. Hold on a second. Mm. Are you about to be petty? You, you may see it that way. I don't. No, 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 no. I'm, no, I'm asking a serious question, sir. Because I, I am, all I'm going to say point. is this. If you are about to be petty, you absolutely enjoy every second of that. <laughs> that would be true. But I'm not. I am in this moment. I am not attempting to be petty. I'm attempting to be rational. Okay, that's true. Hey. It, is, it is 2022. And we all have some version of an electronic, you know, monitoring device for time that you can go to. Mm -hmm. Mistakes happen at track meets. Yes, they do. It is what it is. And the young man out here on the West Coast uh, from Mount Sac Juco, 
I know the coach there. I think they're good people. They always have great athletes. There's no universe where 988 happened. You can literally take the video and put it in any system you want. Dart fish, coach's eye, whatever it is you want. And it's not even close to 988. So because that time is so eye popping and you know, legitimately world class. In a moment like that, I feel like the meat should have taken some precautions or, you know, figured something out because that's a whole issue. And that, like, if, if a coach or an athlete believes that thing to be real, they'll probably make decisions, you know, based on that. They did. That, well, it's already been posted. What what was posted? He's foregoing and going pro. What? Oh, there okay, it is. Now, see, and 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 now and now we all have a problem. <laughs> or well, at least he will. He will. <laughs> like, okay, great. Good luck. Good luck, sir. Wish you the best. Uh, Mount <laughs> Sack is coming up in a week and a half. Yeah. On his on his own track. Mm -hmm. I really hope he's in the open Olympic development 100 meters with all the other 9-8 guys. Man, he better fall start. <laughs> <clears throat> what else? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's unfortunate, right? Because I'm 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 relatively old and relatively experienced at this point, right? So, can I tell a difference between a 987 and a 988 race by eyeball? Probably not. Can I tell a difference between a 988 and a 998 race? Yes. Between a 988 and a 101 race, if I have been drinking, yes. <laughs> and a 988 race in April by a guy whose PB legal is 1016 already oh, smells so. funny. Mm -hmm. And then when you watch the race again, you're like, unless everybody else in that race just got a whole lot faster too, we have a problem. Oh, according to the meet results, they did. Everybody in that race ran massive PRs. Which always tells you that there's a problem. Either either the wind gauge didn't work, forty nine, or there's a timing malfunction. Mm -hmm. It was more than one yeah. race too. I had a coach let me know that there was sizable PRs in the female event too. Look, mistakes happen, and people just need to own them. I remember one when I was in college, uh, we had a dual meet with UCLA, and. Uh, I didn't run the 200 in this meet, but they ran the 200 from the the wrong oh, the wrong start. four by two starts, <laughs> right? The so no, the no allow situation from a year to right. two ago, mm -hmm. right? So, so so everybody's running a different distance, and obviously the further out the track you go, the shorter distance you're running. So somebody whose PB was who was 2140 ran like 2012. It's like, you already know something's wrong. Yeah, you know, and look, so while, while we're talking about malfunctions, you know, let's, let's go ahead and, you know, and put it out there. there. There was a malfunction at the Florida Relays. And, you know, the men's, the first seat of the men's 100, the timing system didn't, didn't work. And we did what we were supposed to do. And we we, we re-ran the race. And, there, you know, there was some chatter on the internet today about, you know, shame on us. Well, uh, things happen, guys. You know, the internet goes out, the power goes out, you know, the, you know, again, you know, massive rainstorm, didn't get a start and neither system started. But this chatter on the internet about, you know, shame on us for not getting a time in a race, you know, shame on you people that don't have enough common sense to know that these things happen at track and field. And if anybody has enough common sense, look, I had three guys in the race. So if anybody was not happy, it should have been me, right? <laughs> And if you look at the video, all three of my guys ran pretty well in that race. So, but guess what? As I said today, it's April 2nd. And when it comes down to it, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make my man Lamar here happy for a half a second. Who gives a shit what happened on April 2nd? 
They don't give out tokens on April 2nd. You know? So for those of you who want to come at my program and at my neck because of one race, okay, do what you do. But, you know, back up. It was a race. It happened. It was a mistake. It wasn't even a mistake. It was just a malfunction. But at the end of the day, I can promise you, nobody will remember that if you have your people ready to run in May and June. Mm. <laughs> Heard man hand rub. <laughs> it's just unnecessary the, the the chatter behind that, and um, I, I mean we've I think we've all been in a track where we've seen that happen, right? At some point in time in your life. We've Ooh. all been at a major yeah. track meet that's seen that happen. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I want I want to remind all of the people who haven't been at enough track meets that there was a rerun of the one ten hurdles in the Rio Olympics. Mm -hmm. There was a rerun of the sixty meter final at the NCAA Indoor Championships, which was I mean, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, and, and here's the thing, the backstory to the whole Florida Relays thing is like, so, you know, I walk down the track and I get the guys to come back and, you know, the crowd's booing. I'm like, you're booing me for like, I didn't, I wasn't, hey, I'm not the problem here, right? <laughs> and then, you know, we, we, I try to make light of the whole situation. But then when I walk out down the track, the starter came to me as like, coach, I promise you, we shot the recall gun as soon as we got word from the, the, from the booth. Because he knew my next question was, why do we wait till 80 meters down the track to fire the recall gun, right? right. So there's a staff food, right? But the, he started said, look, and, and then the timer, who was a, you know, a guy that his time meets all over the world and major championships at that said that he did, they, they thought that they had to start and they didn't have it. And by the time they realized it, the guys were halfway down the track, you know? So it was like, it's just, it was just a malfunction of, of, of life, I guess, you know, the system. So nobody did it on purpose. Um, for the people out there that would probably you should have had a backup system. Well, if the first system, the, neither if you don't get the start, neither system starts. Just that simple. So the only thing we could do is rerun the race, and there's guys who chose not to run it, you know, the guys who chose to. But again, like I said, I mean, end of the day, you know, it 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 was training for me, my group anyway. So go back and you get ready for May and June when it counts. Yeah, that's the beauty of April is you can okay. rerun it. Or you could not exactly. rerun it, and it does not exactly, make yeah. a difference. Exactly, because 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 if it's May, it happens at the conference meet. Oh, you're running, you're rerunning. You don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. Listen, well, I, I've I've seen a timing malfunction. I've seen a timing malfunction at a last chance meet in the four by four. Ooh. Mm. And and then all the teams were notified, and they were given the option to rerun in 45 minutes, and two i think three of the three of the five teams decided to run and two of those three teams made it to the national meet like look it happens folks it never happens on purpose hey like, like remember the remember the situation in jacksonville was that last year where during the four by four the, the lights in the stadium go out yeah <laughs> yeah right? yeah and then all of a sudden, everybody, you know, all, all the all the, the cell phones come out, right? I mean, it's, it's like I said, things happen. Like, you know, yeah. when you're dealing with electronics, think it happens, you know? So like, I'm, there's I'm no, reminded no human of, error on that. It just happened. I'm reminded of Juliet Campbell running back to the relay zone while the gun has gone off in the 4 by one <laughs> yes. in, in a Tad Gormley Stadium in New Orleans in 1993. In and they ended up running that race over again. They had yeah. to run the four by one over again. And yep. uh, I mean, remember, remember the year at, at Penn Relays, Florida and TCU in the big battle and they're, and they're both in the wrong lane. Oh my gosh. Remember that one? Yeah. I mean, these things <laughs> happen. I mean, it's, just, it's part of track and field. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is. Now I remember now, this was, this was a long time ago. I was before electronic. It was like back when you'd had the, you know, they, they took the, whatever those pictures were called, but like there was a, there was a, a malfunction with the timing system at the USATF meet, you know, out in out in Oregon, the law place. Mm. And, and the women's 200 that had, you know, you know, the best girls in the world at the time, you know, Pam Marshall and that group. So, yeah, these things happen, folks. So, yeah. Well, if, if, if we're going to be getting into the internet shenanigans, um, 
if, if we're going to do this week in petty. I was just going to say, we're going to go ahead and sit on this cloud of this week in petty, <laughs> you know, go ahead and quote that because uh, this might be a thing. <laughs> um, Lamar. Yes, sir. Um, your, your thoughts on Instagram lives. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I, okay. I, I always feel like going on Instagram live is like playing Russian roulette, right? Like there are no really good outcomes. You just survive it. And this past weekend, uh, there were some Instagram live shenanigans that are, they're perfect examples of why you don't, you don't do Instagram lives that you don't control because the trolls live, they live for Instagram lives. This is their 12 seconds of shine to go at somebody who has some shine. And if you're not quick-witted, if you're not, if you're not able to be calm in those situations and take control of those situations, you get kind of what happened. You get a troll going at a world-class athlete and just giving them the blues for like 12 minutes. That, is, that a, is, that, is that enough of a talk of a of a alley oop for you, oh, Governor? I, I I just and I think I I've I've said this um, in our in our group chat before. Um, there you you cannot win. Nobody wins when you engage a troll can't beat a troll man you can't beat him okay uh and nowhere is it more you know um it's more clear than on twitter or a facebook where there's nobody you can't see anybody there's there are just these words and it's like bait it's like i'm gonna throw this out there and i'm praying you respond because all it is, is all that's going to happen is this is, is this going to breed more ignorance. It's going to breed more. And I'm just going to raise the temperature. And I'm just going to keep raising it until you explode. And guess who's going to look stupid, right? And that is, you know, you know we, I, I would think that at this point in our experience with social media, that you can see it you can detect it and you can eliminate it all in one move like it's it's something that it's just not worth it it's just not you, you can't play poker with somebody who has nothing to lose right exactly that that's a great analogy um so it, if you're somehow in the track world and unaware of what we're even talking about um Trayvon Bramell decided to go on Instagram Live and take Q&A from his followers, which a lot of people do. Um, I kind of get it, but not really. Um, but, I, but I understand it. Um, and this absolute nobody of a human being decided to get on there and just disrespect the man across the board, um, called him soft, you know, said that he choked at the Olympics, said, he said all kinds of just wild, disrespectful stuff. And it's Instagram Live, so it's, you know, to his face, meaning they're both able to see each other and they're having this conversation, right? My, here's the thing. As much disdain as I have for the individual who thought themselves worthy to come on a computer screen and talk trash to a human being whose who, who's talent they could never hope to have and has done things in this world that they could only have wet dreams about doing. <laughs> like as much disdain as I have for that 
individual and people who behave that way, it's Trayvon's fault. Bro, how can you stand, how can you let that happen? You have a button and you have a gotta, microphone. You got to hit the button. You got to hit the button and get that clown off of there or you have to retort in a way as forceful as the disrespect that you are being shown. Like, I don't, I just don't understand. I can't imagine Maurice Green, Otto Bolden, any of the greats of our past entertaining this kind of type of conversation, let alone sitting there and openly taking disrespect. I just, I just can't, I can't see that. And so because Trayvon's a respectful dude, because he was trying to be civil in a moment that didn't warrant any civility whatsoever, mm -hmm. he almost ended up looking like he, what he was being accused of being, which was soft. And that's tragic because no random clown on the internet should be granted access to get on the internet and talk to you that way. And the cold part is you gave him the access. So like, I don't, I can't imagine that there's enough clicks, likes, follows in the world that make that a worthy way to conduct business. I just, I don't. And as a fan of Trayvon, I was both pissed off that someone was disrespecting him like that but i was more disappointed that he let it happen in the manner that he did and so you know to to the pro athletes out there in our sport you don't need to do that to make the sport better or your brand bigger you don't need to engage with these clowns because they are clowns don't get it twisted they are clowns and so i just i i don't i don't like seeing listen <laughs> you tom brady doesn't do that lebron doesn't do that kd gets in fight with fights with trip with twitter trolls which is why i don't actually respect kd but <laughs> that's a whole nother issue like just don't you don't need to do that you're bigger than that you're more important than that don't give these people that have no understanding of what you do for a living and what it takes to do those things don't don't give them an audience please Well, I I wasn't a I have not been privy to the conversation. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but um, it's just a situation where, like you said, he gave a guy access to him. The guy took advantage of that and was you know clearly very disrespectful and rude. And like you said, just push the button and get rid of him. But so my challenge to Trayvon and the rest of the hundred meter people in the country that um, this troll, as you called him, called out. The best way to shut him up is to go out and run well. And show them that you know what the USA hundred meter people are about. So I'm a I'm riding with that because I think that we're going to see some special things out of the, the hundred this year. And you know, oh man, you know, indeed. Like you know, we 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 talked about this a little bit. You know, like last year, I think the event that kind of took our breath away was both four hundred hurdles, right? Oh yeah. So what what event what event do we think is going to be that's going to be this year? Will it be the men's two hundred? Like will it be the women's two hundred? after what we saw at Texas Relays. Like, what, what events do you guys think, event or event, do you guys think it's going to be like that? Like, oh, my God, did you see that? You know? Well, it's ironically the, the, enough. Did you see those shenanigans, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, ironically enough, for me, the men's 100 meters is as interesting as it's been in decades. Yes. Maybe ever. Yeah. Maybe I, ever. I, I, Maybe I, ever. I said, I said to, to both Sir Lucius and coach anderson uh, offline i think this is the first time in my life where the 100 meters has been legitimately in doubt oh absolutely. like i yeah. i don't legitimately have a this person is gonna win mm -hmm. for the first time in my life and i'm about to be 52 yeah that's that's and, a great and, point. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the only guy that you know is going to be at the world for us is christian because he has the buy right? right exactly Right. And that's, that's, honestly, that's the only reason you know he's going to be there. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Because the other three, you got no clue who they're going to be. Right. And, and I mean, you know, when, when the Bolt era was that, you tuned in to see how fast can this dude run. Yes. Not like the race was in doubt. Yeah. Like the race is legitimately in doubt. Like I could, I could make a very easy case for five or six different people being ended up more world champions. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, you know, I don't think we're going to see a world record, but you don't need a world record for, for it to be the best show in the world. So I'll, I'll ask this question. Okay. So you got one event at the NCAA championships this year, one men, one women that you say do not miss. What are those events? Women's sprint hurdles. <laughs> yes, Easy. That's a good one. Right. Absolutely. Um, I would say the women's 400. <laughs> sure. Because, yeah, I, I, because the young lady that ran 51 at, at, uh, the, uh, from Kentucky at, at, um, at Florida Relays, um, she's going to be in there too. Like, you, you best believe. I, I think we're going to see some serious running um, in, in the 400. Uh, I, I would say the women's 100 hurdles and the men's 200, but nothing on this planet would keep me from watching the heptathlon. Mm. Mm. I get nothing. I, I I get that. We we usually you know give you give you shit about your your affinity for the multi. But we get that. <laughs> um, I mean, look, she she's like Anna Hall's like. We all recognize really early. We were watching a thing, Mo. Right, that we just we should just collect all these times we get to see her in a college uniform because we know like it's going away soon. I'm not saying Anna's necessarily going pro immediately. I just know that what she's doing is not normal. It's not even generational. It's twice in a lifetime. You know, I just had a thought about Anna Hall, remembering her, the, the chit chat that came with her coming out of high school. Yeah. And it's, it's great to see that it's actually coming forth. And like, she's this presence that she was predicted to be, you know, when at Thorpe Cup, there was that conversation and now it's all coming to fruition. And, you know, she's got this great opportunity now to be with this coaching group that is allowing the growth overall where, you know, she could have landed or still been at a place where that was being stammered. And in her case, like that's important to her. Like she doesn't want to be known as just a, as a, a multi athlete. She wants to be known as an athlete. And you know, they're, they're, and I and, and this is bad because like someone emailed me and was like, "You need to put Anna Hall and Sterling Lester in the four hundred hurdles and take them out of the multi." Which okay, first of all, if you know Anna and Sterling, that's not happening. Right. But you can have three girls run fifty five seconds. Well, Anna has run fifty five, and Vanessa is going to. Starting Lester will not even consider the four hundred hurdles, so uh, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Starting's like I'll run the four hundred, uh, but I'm not running the four hundred hurdles. And the funny thing is, like this person, like they they emailed me, and when I didn't respond to the email. They sent me a personal letter to my office, right? Mm. <laughs> like they were, they were adamant about put the three you in the four hundred. You're gonna get this. Exactly, you're gonna get you're, 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 exactly, exactly. Whether you want a psychologist or not. You're going to hear this. So. You're going to get a summons was, next. Well, well hopefully, <laughs> exactly. hopefully whoever that person is watches the show. Well, and if right. you know whoever they are, get them a clip of this to the show. Now, the governor mentioned the 400, which I absolutely don't disagree with. The crazy thing about the 400 is, and it's kind of to the point that we were, that I was just making about Bolt and the 100 era, right? The 400 for the women were spectacular last year. Yeah. It's just... Mo was so much yes. better. Yes. We forgot what happened behind her. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mo out of that, that was one of the best NCAA 400s of all well, time. The same can be said about the 800. I mean, yes. what right. what are we about to witness? <laughs> so you know, for the the men. I, there's a lot of good events for the men. I'm I'm having trouble pinning one down. The, the men's hundred is interesting to me for the same record, for the same reason that the USA or, or world hundred is, I have no freaking idea who's going to win it. Yeah. Like it's so wide open. Um, but like, like, like if there, if there was a poll that anybody could pick the kid, a young man from USC to win it indoors, maybe him and Jet would have, but nobody else did. Right. right? right. Yeah. And, and if right. we forget the dude was in lane one or two. 
right? So mm-hmm. he, he didn't even win a semi, but he crushed yeah. him in the final. Yeah. Man, I don't, I don't I, know. I don't know. I guess for, I guess for me, the, the reason I picked the men's 200 is it's like threefold. One, it's the meeting point between some of those hundred guys and some of those four guys. And, and there's a lot of ridiculousness that's going on in there. Two, what Matthew Bowling does is always a legitimate story to watch. And three, and look, I'm not a fanboy, but at the end of the day, I just firmly believe that this dude is really going to figure it out one day. But I'm telling you this, when, when Joseph Fombole decides to run from point A to point B, it's a wrap, folks. That dude is the collegiate record holder in the 200. Well, when he runs from point A to point B, it's a wrap. I, I'm, you know, I think you talked me into it just there, sir, because <laughs> as we sit here today, which is, uh, you know, April 5th, April 5th 6. 2020, 2020, 2020, 2022, 2022, 2024, and then Matthew Bowling at 2031 is number six. So it just might have to be the men's 200 meters. I mean, are we, are we hearkening back to um, uh, Sacramento, that Sacramento 200? I mean, it could be. Are we going back there? It could be better. I mean, look, okay. Epic. Walter Dix, Tyson Gay, Wallace yes. Freeman, uh, right. Xavier Carter, and, and Wallace Xavier beat Carter. Up, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wallace beat him up. Wallace yeah. Here, okay. curb stomp him. So here's the thing. Oh, my Mar- God. Marcellus Moore, who used to be at Purdue and has now transferred to Texas, mm-hmm. is sitting at number eight at 2039. Wow. Okay. So we have AM, Texas Tech. Florida, Florida, Kentucky, Georgia, Stanford, you know, the freshman who runs 10 0 mm-hmm. in April, and then Texas. Now, last I checked, all those places have people who are, you know, decent at coaching. Mm-hmm. So if they're 2020 in April, yeah, I mean, you see a handful of 19s <laughs> yep. at the cathedral with all the chips on the line. And hell, Marcellus Moore, his team gonna be in the running for the national title. Yeah, we got the Gators here in the running for the national title. We got Georgia here in the running for the national title. It's like these. Not only are these races gonna be and, fast, they're gonna and let's remember this: the indoor it, national champion hasn't run it yet. He hasn't run it yet. Right. right. <laughs> he will have something to say, folks. He will have a lot to say. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess it is the men's two hundred. Yeah. See, when you when you talk about the men's hundred, it's like, like you said, like you have no clue who's going to win that. Like no, you know, no that, 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 that that's a that's a story I think we all want to watch unfold, right? Like like who's going to come to the forefront? Who's going to make the statement? Because there, there's there's a nine nine coming somewhere. There is. Mm-hmm. It, might, it might be windy, but there's one coming, right? There, there's a, there's a plethora of ten O's going to start happening, and probably wind aided as well. But like at the end of the day, like. It's going to come down with a hundred to the guy that kind of like indoors, the guy that shows up, gets to the final, and executes at a high level will be the national champion in hundred on the women's side. But see, as as sexy as the women's one hundred hurdles is, does anybody want to miss the women's hundred? Oh. Because with, mm-hmm. with, with what Jet's doing, with what the Baylor did, and what yeah. I saw Abby, that's a three headed monster. And yeah. again, there's somebody out there going, yeah, I'm going to be a part of this party. Because the young lady from the, the indoor national champion hadn't run yet either. Yeah. And oh, by the way, she'll be in games one next weekend as well. So, yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. Coastal Carolina. Chu, 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 Chu are you not going to be here on Saturday? Not on Saturday. I leave for Krifta in the morning. Oh, shame on you. Krifta. I know. I had to open my <laughs> mouth and try to go do a job. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll forgive you. We'll send, I'll send you videos. Don't worry about it. Oh goodness! What, what what do we have next, too? Because we could keep doing petty topics. I know, right? We'll we'll keep this to be segmented for the weeks coming. This will this will be a nice little uh, sprinkle, little sprinkles. So, um, I was sent a question, and I'm going to not paraphrase it, but I'm going to give a layer to let the other layers bloom. So, um, here recently, recent past. Uh, international recruitment has been on the rise. 
and it's the incline has been substantial and it's taken a, it's made an impact on the NCAA. So with that and being that the NCAA is the breeding ground, the development center for athletics as a whole, can this also be the contributing factor of the decline of US athletics and its development? Um, yeah, uh, go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead, Governor. Go no, ahead. no, 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 you, you... Okay, okay, so like for me, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not like so. As we talked about during the pandemic, when we were talking about if if we were gonna get back to playing sports, America is and always has been a very sports driven society. Sports and money, athletics and money, right? And so, what people are doing is people have gotten, in my opinion, we've gotten people have gotten lazy, and so they're looking for what we like to call the ready maids And the ready maids are the Europeans, the Caribbeans that are a little older and a little more mature have been doing it long. So everybody's looking for that quick fix, that person to go out there and find a way to get into the top 10 in the country or the top 20 in the country, depending on what schools you have, because then you get bonus money for that, right? So now you don't have to coach as well. So do I think it's led to a bit of a decline? I absolutely, yes. You know. Do I think that uh, just going to continue to do it? Absolutely. When you can go out and sign a guy that's run 10-2 already versus doing what my man Coop did and find a 10-4 and making him 10-0, most people are going to take, take the other option. And I think that it, it hurts the American kids in a lot of ways because there's a lot of opportunities they're not going to get because of the, the international that you can go after. But I don't, I don't know what you do to stop it because as long as, as long as there's a money behind it, they're going to keep doing it. Well, um, I, I think that the age that we're in, um, the pandemic age, the COVID year age has really turned things upside down from the standpoint of, okay, so we're talking about elite performances, but we're also talking about athletes that are 22, 23, some are 24. So now you're moving into grown folks, okay? And again, I, I, I look at it both ways. Um, you know, for a school that's trying to keep up with the Joneses, for a school that's trying to, to produce or put a product on the track, that can compete with the elite. Um, some schools, and as Sir Lucia said, I mean, it's call it lazy, but do you have the time to develop a young 17, 18, 19 year old kid <clears throat> and move them into that category and, and get them to start understanding, okay, this is a standard we're trying to get at and we need to get there now. And we need to start thinking about that. Um, so on, 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 on that note, in my opinion, in general, there's a hierarchy that starts with the portal, then international, then JUCO, and then high school, right? So, and I, and I would even take it one step further. I think it hurts um, high school boys, high school men much more because we're also dealing with a deficit of scholarships on the men's side, right? So when you start to, you know, recruit from those three categories, all of a sudden now, a kid that might have been thinking about going to a top tier school, that option is not there. It's, it's not going to be there. And, you know, at some point, things will, will go back and revert to, you know, what we're used to. At some point, the COVID year will go away. At some point, you know, that kid going after their second master's <laughs> will, not, will not be there, right? 
or the kid that gets to the end of their, you know, their eligibility or their um, degree program can't get into a master's program at that school and decides, you know what, I want to go have fun one more year, right? That will end at some point, okay? So I think in the interim, yes. I think it's absolutely hurting um, that middle tier, you know, uh, high school kid. And it's, you know, even for me, you know, when, when I'm, when I'm talking to athletes and I'm trying to get them to understand, right? Like, this is what it is. And this is what this is, you know, and, and as long as the upper echelon schools that choose to go that route, as long as they keep doing that, those slots are not going to be there. And yeah, so that that's, I think it'll hurt temporarily, but I think it, we will get back to what it should be. Um, um, go what? for it, Clyde. Go for it, Clyde. Um, I agree a lot with what the governor said. I think your hierarchy breakdown is spot on. I'm I'm not sure if I agree and and two I if if you tell me you have the stats I'll I'll accept it I'm not really sure I agree with the idea that there's a uptick in international recruiting I've always seen internationals all over the place in in the NCAA is there you know significantly more of them now than ten years ago or twenty years ago I have absolutely no idea what um, what I'll, I'll interject Clyde what I will say is that the blueprint, the, the footprint is ginormous. Much larger. Now. It's much larger. Right. It, that, it, that's what I was going to say. Like, I, I think, I think there is no, day. there is no place in the world that is not being trying, you know, and, yeah. looked at now. Right. That, that, that that's, crazy. that's where I was going to go with it. Uh, if, yeah. if anything, I think the, the reach of where we get these people yes. from has expanded. Yes. Yeah. And they are, they meaning the international athletes are more open to going to a litany of different programs now. Right. Right. I think social media and, and the ease at which you can get access to people has a lot to do with that. Yes. But I also, I also think that a lot more people may have realized that, you know, this, uh, if I want to do this running thing, um, the NCAA system is a pretty damn good breeding ground for whatever it is my next step is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it is the best farm system of all professional sports. Period. Okay? Yes. It ain't even close. Yeah. NCAA track and field is the best base layer into whatever your pro endeavor is. Yeah. Um, and so is it hurting the development of American athletes? No, I don't think so. The transfer portal is hurting the development of American kids to be recruited mm -hmm. because of what the governor said. More people are inclined to go find the, the ready, the ready proven made. commodity in the transfer yes. portal rather than take a chance on the quote unquote developmental kid out of high school. And that sucks, but it's also smart business. Mm -hmm. And so if, you know, someone like myself right now, I look at that landscape and, and I see everybody trending in this direction. So my brain is like, damn that, I'm going to go the other way. Because <laughs> there's always an opportunity to get a leg up, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I think if coaches can be a little bit more creative and, and aren't necessarily scared of the work, you know, because we all don't have, you know, a line of people that we get to turn away every year. Mm -hmm. And portal shopping is fun and exciting, but it's also, you know, <laughs> a very hit and miss dangerous endeavor. And so it, I, I can't say it's, it's hurting the development of the American athlete in our sport, because last I checked, we're still turning out a ton of highly touted, highly, you know, respectable, highly talented American kids every mm -hmm. year. Like there's the new hot American in a multiple, multiple dis uh, disciplines. So I don't think it's hurting that. I, th I just think it's, I think there's more people invited to the party of being good quickly now. 
And that looks like it makes the landscape more difficult to navigate, and it probably is. But at the end of the day, when the dust settles, still got the same five or six programs fighting it out for NCAA championships every year, right? Yes. So, you know. Well, I mean, the, the rich are always going to get, they're always going to eat first. That's just course. how that works. Of course. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. So, I'm not going to be a contrarian. I'm just going to shine a light to a, a different section. I, I agree with everything that's been said about the portal and the age of athletes and all of that on the track. But I have felt for the last 10 years that the recruitment of international athletes has severely handicapped the development chain of American technical event athletes because to take a very gifted high school boy for instance who's jumped 215 and spend the money necessary to get him and the time necessary to coach him to 225 and above doesn't make any sense when you can find any number of international kids who've jumped 223 or 221 and they may be two years older, but they now have the same eligibility as the high school kid. And so in the technical events, the high jump, the pole vault, the discus, the javelin, mostly the field events, it is without question, I think, suppressing and shrinking our pool of athletes in both genders um, only because, I mean, I hate to be glib, but like in, in Clyde's words, like it's just, it's, it's good business. At the end of the day, if I'm making six figures and I'm the head coach of a power five team, like nobody's going to give me credit for winning a national championship with all American kids. I don't get like, I don't get extra points. Do you know what I mean? Like they're only going to give me my check and they're only going to give me my credit for winning the national championship. If they're all international, all American, half and half, 80, 20, literally nobody cares. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, if you're the best program in the country, you're going to recruit and sign the very best kids you can get. And it doesn't even make any sense to turn away a South African kid who has run 45, 12, you know, as opposed to a high school kid who's run 46, 05. Not saying that, you, that that kid's not really good, but if you only got one scholarship and you're only gonna get one of them, of course, you're gonna take the better kid. And, and that's in the, in the combined events, the gap, I mean, the combined events, in the field events, the gap between what's available internationally and what's available nationally is much larger, much, much, much larger. And it's biggest, it's biggest in the throws. Oh, no it, doubt. International javelin, international shot, international disc, and certainly international hammer. They're just, they're just a better buy. End of story. They, they have fewer moving parts, right? Like the high school implements that we throw are the lightest. So if you get an international that's throwing junior implements, those implements are still closer to the implements we throw in college than the high school kids with the one six and the, and the 12 pound. So like at the end of the day, like that just makes sense. And it's caused a whole lot of, uh, of American, um, throwers and American uh, uh, technical inventors to have to rethink things, right? Like to go to non-Power 5 schools that will give them money and the time and, and develop them. And mm -hmm. so in some ways it has broadened the, the landscape, you know, that, I mean, there are some really good kids at some places that didn't used to be. But the funny thing is, as was mentioned earlier, those, those, those schools have money too, yeah. you know? I mean, Princeton had two international pole vaulters in the top five at the national meet. They won two right now. <laughs> right. And so like at the end, what, why, I mean, if they're smart enough to get into Princeton, why wouldn't I take them? I, I mean, it just is what it is. So for the stats, 
one in 10 athletes in the NCAA are international. One okay, in 10, so what? interesting. One in but 10. That's, that's not in track, that's in all of the sports. In right? all of sports, I'm saying in all of sports. Okay. In all athletics. Oh, okay. okay. Has so that number changed precipitously from 10 years ago, 20 years ago? I can't get that info rapidly, but well, I'm, the biggest I am problem you have with that is the vast majority. So the biggest teams on every campus is football, and the vast majority of those people are Americans. Well, so can without so much digging, what is the most internationally populated sport in the NCAA? question mark. Uh, I'm going to say between... women's golf, women's tennis. I will say golf and tennis. Golf and golf tennis. tennis are usually all international. Like there's much. no American kids on the team. So per the internet, it says it's tennis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, things to consider. Well, and something that, I mean, being new to, to this uh, first world problem is how many of these international students have handlers, like legitimate <laughs> handlers, right? Yeah, like it's not that. just the, that random email that you get with a lot of letters.org that's a former international athlete that's now representing. Like, no, these are like people that you go to and that people in both directions go to student athletes as well, whatever, you know, who filter. And it's like, and, and you, I mean, we all get the emails that, these international athletes, like you all have said, want to go to the best training system, which yeah. is the NCAA, to have the better facilities, to have the more knowledgeable coaches and this, that, and the third, whatever cliche words or phrases that we want to get thrown at or thrown for an email. But I mean, whether this is the new norm, whether there's an incline, decline, whether it was prior or, or it's going to be in the latter, uh, it's a thing. So, so let's 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 you know. I mean, I'm not going to get technical, but let's look at the javelin. Okay. How many states are allowing high school javelin in the United States? Not many. Alabama. Uh, I was like, what is Idaho, it like fifteen? I say. Like Five? Alabama, Idaho, Louisiana, Maine, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Dakota, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Utah, Vermont, Washington, and Wyoming. Do, you hear, more do you hear California in there? Do nope. you hear Florida in there? Florida, Florida has it now. Florida has Florida it now? Does have okay. it. Yeah, they do. Texas, right? So you're talking about some of the most talent-rich states right in the entire country that don't even allow this right right what's right. what state is it that just started allowing the four hurdles is it florida florida florida, florida, yeah. florida. florida getting i getting can't wait <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. get off I, us now get off <laughs> get off it's gonna go insane i can't wait but again you know part that's part of the challenge as a, as a recruiter right? You're looking at a female 400 meter hurdler from Estonia, right? That has run multiple 400 meter hurdle races in her life. And then you have a 300 meter hurdler that can run the qu a decent quarter, but there's still that aspect of, okay, what happens when you add mm -hmm. the last 100? What's going to happen there? And you don't know. You don't know the answer to that question. Right. So there are certain areas I feel like, you know, I think the U.S. has hamstrung itself, you know, for whatever reason, why they don't choose to do these events, don't choose to allow these events in high school. Um, and they just so happens. I mean, think about what Mississippi State did in the javelin mm -hmm. on the men's side and what it did for that program at the national meet one event mm -hmm. right and where did they go they had to go around the globe and find was it three or four of them it was like three three, three for sure right so i mean kudos to them i mean you, are you gonna are we gonna argue with that right 
I mean, the, that legacy is already there, you know? So, um, yes, it does hurt. Yeah, I, I think it does hurt, absolutely. Um, but as long as there are teams out there that are trying to win and they're trying to win now, um, they're going to be looking at that quick fix, you know, and, and whether they can keep that going after they have the success, that's a real litmus test. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, if, if anybody ever wondered, like, whether what we're saying is true, like whether the world is being a uh, farm system in the collegiate, in, in our collegiate system, one half of the final of the indoor 60 meter hurdles for women at world championships competed in the NCAA mm -hmm. and one third of the, of the heptathlon entrance competed in the SEC. So like at the end of the day, like the, the proof is obvious. Yes. Right. We, we, we are without question training everybody's people. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and the question then is, is like, is that an issue? But because I don't know how you change it because as long as they pay coaches to win, coaches it's are gonna gonna get the best athletes. Yep. Yep. Well, I, and there are definitely more layers to that, you know? So that was just the first stir of the pot. And I'm sure that's going to transform into a concept that we dissect even more as the year goes on. Um, but with that being said, now I've got to take some shots and uh, ask Mr. Feel My Pain to step in line for rapid fire. <laughs> and feel some pain. pain. Let me lock in. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. So, I'm ready. Shortened, shortened question series, but I thought this was pretty uh, to the point here. So, okay. Mr. Intellectual, what is the next book on your list to read? Mm. Uh, I'm going to try something that I've failed at in the past, but I'm going to simul read. I'm going to try to read two books. Um, Shoe Dog, uh, the the Phil Knight Nike book, mm -hmm. and uh, it takes what it takes. Got it. Uh, who is the smartest person you ever met? Uh, okay, intellectually smart? Sure. Um, it's a tie. Um, my... Uh, the, the wrestling coach at my high school um, taught our uh, U.S. history class without a book, and he was a finalist on Jeopardy. Wow. Mm. So his name is Lance Rhodes. Uh, he and probably Randy Huntington. Mm. Got it. Got it. I mean, Ra Randy Huntington, has an, he has intimidating intelligence. You know what I mean? Like sometimes, like seriously, yeah. sometimes you, if you engage yourself in, in the wrong conversation with Randy, you just don't feel smart anymore. Yeah. I mean, and he's spending all his time in China. Does that not make him superior? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just, just kidding. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you really weren't kidding, but nice job. <laughs> right. Wow. Right. You just right. kind of stuck that right. one right in there. She's like, you? okay. I'll just she leave jumped this all right over there. there. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, that was funny um which campus is your favorite that you've worked at so not athletics not track and field which campus uh that is very easy the university of california oh my gosh um <laughs> but the thing is it's not even being a homer like look i can tell you right now i can i can show you pictures of views from that campus and you're like there's no shot that you get this view just by going to college here like yes you do no True. i can show you three views of restaurants that you go to <laughs> and that's the reason why you go there <laughs> <laughs> i mean hey look the food the views the school all the above gypsies in the burrito spot down the street that's all you need to all, know. all good um, what is your current hurdle that you're trying to clear? Pun intended. Uh, 
Uh, full disclosure, uh, I want to lose 15 pounds. Got it. <laughs> I think you just got thumbs up all the way around. Um, have you ever skydived? No. Skydove? Skydive? I, I absolutely would have and was all about that at some point. And my freshman year, uh, one of my track and field teammates was on Purdue's skydiving team and his chute failed to open and he died. And I thought to myself, if he does that for a living, so to speak, and that could happen, no shot. Everybody should skydive. It's been I, and the thing is, I, I, like, I agree. Like, I'm a, I'm a risk taker and adventurer, but I, I can't get past that one. I just can't. <laughs> I get it. Like, like I would sooner bungee jump than skydive, even oh, though no. they're. That's, that's, see, a, that's, that's another. Saying. That's another non, non, non. No. no that, I don't trust the bungee at all. So over the weekend, um, Lewis Hamilton. You did both. Oh no. I know. <laughs> I was like, is that where Lewis he's going? Hamilton, the the race car driver, F one. Yeah. Ten times in one day. Skydive. Dude. He did. No, like, no shot. Really. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm gearing up. I, I want to do it. It's on my bucket list, but 10 times. Yeah. No, one, one, time. <laughs> one time. I, I, I think I do. I think I do want to do it once. Like I, I, like I said, I wanted to do it. And then that happened. So I, I think I'm, maybe I'm, a, maybe I should be over no, it by no, now. No, 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 no. Okay. Me and Sir no. Lucius got all your stuff out the ground. We got all your bags. We got your shoes. Oh, look, look, I'm going to be there for you, bro. I'll bring you your bag. I'll make sure you got some water when you get oh. there, some Gatorade. And I mean, I'll, 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 I'll take you to eat after you get back, but I'm not. All right. I will go with y'all. I've done it. It's no. phenomenal. I will go with y'all. So it's just, I got the drip drop, you got the water, we're good. There you go. And I got all the pictures. I got the camera, I'm good, but I'm not going up there. The, the thing that seems like so ridiculously dangerous, but oh my God, looks like so much fun, is the, the base jumping with the wingsuits. Oh, dude. That wing like, scooting. Yeah, I don't the, know like, about that, that. That looks like life as a bird. Yeah. Yes, but so you have to actually know what you're doing. Or yeah. you That's why I said. That's yeah. why I said it looks amazing. I no shot. And I ain't doing that. Okay, last question, and then it's the gentleman's turn. Where will you never go again? Ooh, so many places. <laughs> That's a loaded. Oh my God, question. that is a truly loaded question. Um. <laughs> Look, it's low hanging fruit, but I, I probably don't ever need to go to Russia again. Amen. I Amen. dig it. Now, see, I can, I can rock with you on that one. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I much easier I probably, than the skydiving deal. I, I can do that. I can do that. I go into Russia. Deal. I, I, I probably don't ever need to go to Russia again. Got it. Russia, All right, Russia gentlemen, it's your turn. Three places I've been to on this planet where I just did not feel safe. Like, oh, I yeah. Well, because you know what's hotel. going on. Yeah. Right? Mm, no. No, no, no. You right. know, the, the other place that's sort of weird in that nature is like, I want to go to the Louvre and spend three days. But I only want to do it if I can go and stay in the Louvre because the rest of Paris you can keep. <laughs> I've been to Paris like seven times. I promise you, I don't. I, I, I there's nothing there that I want to see other than the Louvre. See, so, so folks that are watching, okay. So under, was that, that a little bit of a subtle flex? First of all, <laughs> no, because most of it was trap, right? So like, it's it, it just. Hold on a second. I've been to Paris like seven times. <laughs> But I've seen the same five things all hold seven times. Hold, hold, hold a second. Don't try to clean it up now. <laughs> you right, flex. We, we got the flex. You know, you, you mean, put your show, you put, put your hands on your shoulders and say, look at me. Right? I've been to Paris seven and times. It, Lucky. I don't think I've even heard the word Paris seven times. And all I will, of us have echo, been to Paris I will seven echo what Lamar is saying. You know, it's easy to read books and Paris is for lovers. And yes. This and that. It's awful. Go see it for yourself. 
Well, see, see, I've 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 been to Paris, and I would agree not seven times, but anyway, um, (laughs) I would agree that it's a a little bit overrated. But look, you you put that out there. You lobbed it up there. I've been to Paris like seven oh, times. Seven times. I, I will I will co-sign this sentiment. I've only been twice, and that's yeah, five less than, the, than Lamar has been there. You know, it it was very pretty. Pretty. But... So the sun was out while you were there. I was like, you know, was, were you up in the air? Because <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. Paris on the ground is not pretty at all. No, no, like the architecture and the lights, and you know, it was cool, but. No, y'all can keep that. Listen, I, it's like I my want 13th to go, favorite European city. <laughs> I want to go and spend and like really, really dive into the Louvre and and like yes, I'm kind of an art nerd and yes, all of the all of the real live history and all of the conspiracy theory things that that would just dig up within my brain within the Louvre are worth it and I want to go. But I promise you, if there was a way I could go and go straight to the Louvre. Do what I had to do and leave. I would. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off that train and um, I want you to very quick, quick, very rapidly, yes, sir. put together your the best men's four by four team you can put together in your track and field since you've been involved in track and field. First thing, rapidly, sir. I know, I know, I know. Um, in order. Mm-hmm. Rye Benjamin, Quincy Watts, Michael Johnson, no, Wade Van Niekerk, Michael Johnson. That's where he asked for a collegiate four by four, but like, no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, I said, I said, I said it in your, in your time. Yeah. Mm. Man, okay. Uh, Clyde, don't ask you? me that same question four by one because I'll fight. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Clyde, what you got? Um. I got a question for him. I got one oh, too. Oh boy. Yes. I, I I call this like like a domino game, right? Because hires beget new situations, right? Who wins an NCAA championship, men or women, first? UGA or USC? Under their new <laughs> you may be the pettiest you ever met in my life. <laughs> um, you are the most incredible oh pettiest I've ever met in my life. That is a great question to and ask. That's a horrible question, and you know. It. <laughs> to ask and I, and and I think you guys know me well enough to uh, to know that I usually swim right by the bait. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bite this bait. That's okay. Oh. I'm with, I'm all right with this one. USC, probably not close. All right. All right, Lamar. You're given an unlimited budget. Put together your dream staff. That's also <laughs> an awful question. No, that's not that's okay. That's not an awful question compared to the pettiness of you. <laughs> so nice try. See, don't don't deflect, sir. You knew it. You've been what you were cooking that up the whole time. <laughs> it literally <laughs> came to me as I was sitting here. I had no question. Yeah. No, that, that was just saying. And then when you got that in your head, it's like, oh, this is a good one. I gotta ask this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear it, Lamar. Dream staff. Oh, I'm gonna you're, I'm gonna probably disappoint the world with this one. I, I'm gonna take the five people on this t- on these tiles and add Brian Blutrick. <laughs> so, but you're missing one. It's supposed to be six. I said the five people on these tiles and add Brian Blue Trick. Yeah, but you Brian get Blue to Trick. add okay. two. Okay. You're you're the director, Wait, I, you get six underneath you. Oh, I get another one? I get an extra? <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, I see. oh yeah, you you're director. Have an extra. You're director. Okay. Oh, you better have an extra because last I checked, no one on this staff, no one on your staff really wants to coach Disney. 
we're not going to have any distances. <laughs> okay. There you go. We're going to have 30.6 scholarships in the speed and power <laughs> events. Okay. Okay. Why not? It's look, it's a model. It's it's doable. Arkansas it's doable. does it without throws. Right. Mm-hmm. Just pick a thing it's you're not going to do and go dominate the rest. Um, yeah, yeah, no, because the thing is, if I'm, if I'm the director, that means I can't coach, mm-hmm. you know, you can only, no, I'm coaching. So. <laughs> we're, we're taking us five and blue and, and we're going to go speed and power and more speed and more power. Mm. All right. That was a good round. That was a good round. So you, I feel like you guys always bring the best for me. Like it, I don't, I don't know what that's about. I don't know. If I, I don't know if I should feel honored or if I should feel like a target. Well, yeah. at least you don't get the fugaziness of it. I get. Um, I appreciated your question, Sir Lucius. That was a, especially with the pressure of answering rapidly. Oh man! Yeah, it got to be uh, rapidly. Well, because I, I was definitely, I was prone to a chewism if you asked me to do it really fast, right? I could have left somebody out real fast. I feel like y'all give me softball rabbit <laughs> hockey. You don't want me to. <laughs> we definitely try to keep you from acting up. That's for sure. Yes. We do. Like, we'll never ask you a question like you just asked me. No, never in a million years. No shot. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <sighs> All right, well, let's give uh, some kudos, some love, some heartbeat props to those out there in the ether who need it or have that don't know that they need it and we need to give it to them. And Sir Lucius is ready to go, so let's go. So I, I'd like to make a suggestion that we just, this week heartbeat props comes from all of us. Um, we, we didn't, we neglected to talk about this during the track is back, but um, uh, a guy that's been near and dear to the sport and a guy that, uh, has, has been a head coach for a long time, is retiring, um, Coach Ralph Spry at, at Auburn University. And I just, I think our hearts, should, the heartbeat props should come from all of us and, you know, wishing Ralph well in his next endeavor in life, but also kudos on a fantastic career at the University of Auburn, Absolutely. Auburn University, War Eagles and all that other stuff that they do down there. But, Absolutely. Um, you're here, you're here. Yeah. yeah. How long has Ralph been so, there? 20? 25 years. 25 years, yeah, yeah. So great career, won a national title, um, national runner-up with the men, I think, or third place with the men a couple of times, and um, he had a great run. He's done a great job. And he was so, in Florida before that, right? No, he was at South Carolina before South- that, and Florida before he was at South Florida, Carolina. Florida, okay, gotcha. Yeah. And he's an Ole Miss grad. Ole Miss grad. Coached yes, by the great, great, the great Joe Walker. Mm, and he's one hell, of a, one hell of a fisherman, from what I've been told. He's quite the angler. He, he, he loves the fish. And he's not, he, apparently he's not too bad of a bowler either. We've had some pretty good bowling discussions. So. <laughs> I think we've got a bowling league getting ready. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, like it's, uh, from what I understand, um, I've been told how frustrating golf is for folks. So that's why I refuse to play it. <laughs> and, if, and if it's more frustrating than bowling, I'm definitely never going to play it. But the good thing about but bowling is you're inside. So. The golf, you don't have to, you have to deal with the heat and the element. So I'm, I'm going to stay inside with bowling, but maybe I'll get Ralph to come visit me here in games one and bowl a little bit with me. So. What's stopping us from having a bowling tournament at the convention? Absolutely There's nothing. Nothing. You know what we need to do, though? Just had the idea. We have a Wii Bowling League. Oh, my no. gosh. <laughs> on the on the no. team? On the no. Wii. Oh, That's gotta be worse than real bowling. No, chew. You know oh. that might be the most girly thing you've ever said. Oh, that was totally unchew like. I mean, come I on. thought that would be not, so much no. fun. Oh, oh we're not doing a little weed. No. It's not real bowling. <laughs> it's no. not at all. You know, listen, Mar- Marissa, <laughs> and you, you, Big League, you are one of the most intelligent people that we all know. But every now and again, there's like a there's like a glitch in the system, and you just don't think things through, and they just word vomit out, and then you say them, and we're like, she didn't say that. Oh nope, she did. Oh no, you gotta work with me. You can ask 
the to beloved this, Coach Anderson. This, it happens once a day. <laughs> to this day, the greatest Olympic village that I've ever been in was in 1992 in Barcelona. And you know why? They had a bowling alley in the village. There you go. Yeah. So, you know, LA so you know we got this new, fo- this, this new football facility going up and it's right next to the track. So mm-hmm. there's a bowling alley in there. Oh, so I might be, I, I know, I know where I'm going to be on some of my next <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Where's Coach Holloway? He's late for practice. Get him out of the bowling alley. <laughs> Wow. Oh. oh man! All right, well, all right. Please well. take, please, please take our uh, our uh, our flowers with you into your wonderful world of retirement. Whenever that day actually comes, Coach Fry, because we love you and you've been an incredible ambassador and contributor to the sport. Yes, you're here. Happy decision making. Right. Well, with that said, again. We bring another fun episode of Athletics LLC to an end. We went left, right, center, northwest, and east, and all over around. So uh, hope you enjoyed. We'll talk to you all again soon. And other than that, have a great weekend. Travel safe. Do well. Bye, everyone. When the lights come on, the road just get to running. When the lights come on, the opponents smash the plumbing. Would you like it warm, hot, and knife the butter? Truth hit them hard, knock them off that rebuttal. Tsunami, tidal wave to your puddle. Tough love, punch when the arms, little brothers. Athletics, double up, see it, there's no others. Track and field's pace, and we'll peel to go further. Hey, Wiley, Coyote, it's road runners. Feels like you know us, you've been with us the whole summer. If not for this quarantine, these four corners wouldn't be here, but we're here, so start learning. You gotta earn your stripes, gotta get your scars. Show you how to fight, but show us who you are. You lack experience, but still you wanna talk. And who is actually talking to your circle's kinda small. Heads prevail when the backbone's strong. Gotta keep it coming, no, it won't last long. Pass a failed and sell the sad song. And if you don't check yourself, then that's wrong. Just trying to give you the real that you asked for. So why you keep cutting us off to ask more? We put it in slow mo, but you fast forward. Athletics, devil, I'll see the task force.